I'm going to touch in on type 1 diabetes for a moment, just so you get a, a feeling for it, okay? Um, it is unusual, and I had no thought that that was going to happen, that in our 120 people, you know, that group of there were type 1s, 21% healed. Now, there's two reasons for that, uh, you know, trying to figure it out, okay? One reason is 88% of type 1 diabetics, no matter what they've been told, do produce insulin. And that's what this Diabetologia 2005 is saying. They, 88% of type 1 diabetics produce insulin. Now all I have to do is just get their blood sugar and get their diet down so there's less sugar, right, to match the insulin. So if you have less sugar than insulin you're producing, which is happening in 21% of the people, you're done. You're healed. And your blood sugars go to normal and you're off uh, insulin. Do everybody follow that? Again, basically, 88% of the people are producing insulin who are type 1. All I'm doing is lowering the blood sugar by diet. Okay, no drugs. Just by diet. And when it's low enough and they're producing enough insulin to metabolize and deal with the sugar, then the diabetes goes away. That's the key. So, again, very simple. Um, and, but that's not my focus, okay? I'm just wanting you to know that, that people, uh, type 1 diabetics do produce insulin, do produce beta cells, and actually one study of an 89-year-old showed he was producing 100 times more beta cells. Type 1 is when you make antibodies against the beta cells and you're killing them. And somehow his body has got it to is producing 100 times more. The average type 1 is producing, in the research, double the amount of beta cells as a non-diabetic. So, but there is inflammation, and what you're seeing here is a, a periductal fibrosis, which is the beta cells have a duct where they, the insulin goes into the system, and that gets scarred down. So we use certain enzymes to begin to unscar it and cut down the inflammation. So we start to open up the flow of whatever insulin there is. Again, we're talking type 1s. Those things are actually what beta cells look like. Just so you know uh, what they look like. Okay, now these are the group in the movie, and you saw that mountain in the back, right? They're on standing on top of that mountain. So when they first come, they can walk 50 yards at best. A little bit like a herd of cats. <laughs> it's like, whoa, everybody's all over the place and stumbling. This. But here we go, at the end of the program, they walk up the mountain. That's, that was cool. That was like, isn't that fun? So that's why they're a little bit in a celebratory mood. Okay, so now... There's a little bit more to the story. The Baker Institute in Melbourne, Australia, saw indeed that even eating a little bit has a long-term effect on your genes. A little bit of what? A little bit of white sugar. So they found if people had one helping of white sugar, they would crave and have a gene epigenetic readjustment to crave sugar for two weeks. Aha, but it gets worse. They're, they're pregnant, their baby would have the same epigenetic downgrade. And if it's a female in utero, her eggs would also give forth children. So uh, what do we got here? We have three generations just by having a little bit of sugar. And these are a little bit done with animals, but there are some very interesting research and in actually more in Latin America where, where where they were studying how come is it that uh, people are obese and they're really not getting much nutrition and it has to do with these kind of mechanisms. Okay, it's mostly the leptin mechanism. So it, it, there's a, a lot of validity to what we're talking about. So you can turn on a system, turn really downgrade a system and it stays with you. So the key again is we've got to undo the genetic program to make, to, to heal throughout the generations. And that's what we're talking about.